So here at Truly Tropical, we grow a lot of tropical fruit. And I'm standing in front of something that does produce fruit, but you shouldn't eat it. This is bay rum. It produces a very small fruit that has toxins in it. But what it's known for is its dark, glossy leaves makes a very attractive hedge, and the leaves just smell really good. We're using it in this area of the grove as a large informal hedge and that's so that we get a little bit of relief from the road noise and also the street lights. Here's another bay rum hedge. We trim this one a lot more. Uh, it's much more narrow and also shorter. It's I guess about eight feet tall and these trees were actually planted about three feet apart. You can plant them much further apart than that because there's a lot of uh, lateral growth in these plants. Here's another bay rum tree. It's planted right next to an avocado tree and all of these small branches really fill out the space. It's grown fairly tall, I'd say about uh, 15 feet tall and you can see that these branches just fill in the spaces from the ground all the way up. Pimenta racemosa, commonly known as bay rum, is native to the Caribbean, where it is also known as West Indian bay tree and, on some islands, silament. This tree is in the myrtle family, so it's related to many plants, including allspice, guava, grumichama, pitomba, Suriname cherry, cherry of the Rio Grande, and jaboticaba. Bay rum is sometimes confused with bay laurel. Both bay rum leaves and bay laurel leaves can be used in cooking, but the trees are not closely related. Bay rum gets its name from the cologne that is made from it. In the 1500s and 1600s, sailors were given a daily ration of rum. After several weeks without bathing, the sailors developed quite a smell. They discovered that soaking bay rum leaves in rum, then applying it to their worst smelling parts made for a better work environment. In the early 1900s, commercial production of bay rum cologne began in the Virgin Islands. Bay rum is a beautiful, medium-sized tree with fragrant, glossy green leaves and attractive peeling bark. Its small white flowers usually emerge in early spring and are very similar to the flowers of other members of the myrtle family like pitomba, jaboticaba, and grumichamba. Small dark ovoid fruits usually ripen in late July. These fruit contain toxins and should not be eaten. Bay rum is typically propagated from seed. Trees can grow to 30 feet or more, but can be maintained at 12 feet or less. Because of its dense growth habit and glossy leaves, bay rum makes an attractive and unusual hedge. Trees grow best in full sun, but can grow in partial shade. Fertile soil high in organic matter with regular irrigation is ideal, but bay rum can tolerate a wide range of soils and conditions. Our trees grow in deep sandy soils without irrigation. Bay rum is tropical, but established trees can tolerate brief periods of freezing temperatures. Leaf damage occurs around 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The tree can sometimes survive temperatures as low as 26 degrees Fahrenheit. Bay rum does well in USDA zones 10 and 11, but some people in colder areas have success growing it in protected locations. We have not seen any problems with pests or diseases on our bay rum trees, but a common disease with some bay rum trees is leaf fungus. This problem is associated with damp conditions. Bay suckers are a common insect pest and are most active in summer months. Fruits and leaves of bay rum contain aromatic oil called bay rum oil or bay oil. In the early 1900s, 
commercial production of bay rum oil began in St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Fruits and leaves were distilled to separate the essential oil, which was used in colognes and perfumes. Now most commercial bay rum is grown in Spain and Morocco. Bay rum oil is used in a wide variety of products, including cosmetics, skin toner, shampoo, insect repellent, fragrances, soaps, air fresheners, and candles. Bay rum oil relieves toothaches and can be mixed with massage oil to soothe aches and pains. Bay rum oil is also used in aromatherapy for its calming effect on the nervous system. Unlike bay rum fruit, bay rum leaves do not contain toxins and can be used in cooking. The leaves impart a clove-like flavor to dishes. Bay rum leaves are also used when cooking meats and in soups, stews, syrup, and teas. Leaves are also used in home remedies. Fresh leaves can be soaked in rubbing alcohol to make an aftershave and to treat bug bites, arthritis, and muscle pains. Bay rum wood is also valued. It is hard and durable and therefore used in cabinet making and for decks. A few gourmets use bay rum wood to make charcoal. Meat cooked with this special charcoal has an exceptional flavor and aroma. Bay rum has many uses, but recently its health benefits have gotten a lot of attention. Bay rum has been and continues to be a very important ingredient in homemade liniments used to treat bug bites, arthritis, sore muscles, strains, and sprains. In fact, one name for the bay rum tree, silament, was probably derived from the word liniment. After hundreds of years of use in folk medicine, scientists discovered that the essential oil of bay rum contains a diterpene that has antibacterial and possibly anti-inflammatory properties. More recently, at least one study found that bay rum oil is a potent antioxidant. Other studies indicate that bay rum oil is a good decongestant, helps sleep and depression, and shows promise in the treatment of MRSA. So we like bay rum so much that we try to keep it in stock. Here are some three gallon plants. I know they're a lot smaller than the plants we just looked at, but they grow. Uh, in fact, they grow rather quickly for us. They seem to have a reputation for growing slowly, and I'm not sure under what conditions they grow slowly, but here we basically got them established. You know, of course they require a little extra care in the beginning, but then they've just thrived on their own. So bay rum is definitely something to consider for your yard. Not only does it look pretty, but it has a lot of uses also.